going on, everybody? Right here in RPL TV, your host, Richie Ray, and we got my boy, Matt Rice, in the building. Look, man, no introduction Ooh, that needed. Pretty good. That was <laughs> no introduction needed, because if y'all want to know more about Matt, he's actually one of the first uh, visitors, you know, podcast members I had maybe about a year ago now. Yeah, about yeah, right about a year when ago. we went over the whole That's kind of cool, of man. Parts, Dang, yeah. a year ago? And then I started a year ago. That was my second episode. Oh, so yeah, man, that. if you want to know about uh, Matt's story, you know, he's uh, heavy into fitness and training and, you know, nutrition. And so he dives a lot into that in the first show. But more importantly, he tells a little bit more about himself. You might get some more of that here today on this show. Um, but yeah, man, we're going to keep this uh, very specific. And we want to like, again, on RPO TV, help our, our guests and our audience, you know, grow and feel like when they come on this episode, on this podcast episode, whatever you want to call it, that you're just encouraged. You know what I mean? So we're going to dive into health, fitness. Um, again, man, I'm excited. Uh, getting your health back right now, man. Don't feel guilty. Let's jump into this. All right. So, so Matt, starting with you, bro. Yo, we, where are we, man? We're in the. So currently, Matt we're actually den. in the uh, rice den. Yeah, this is my gym. I love that. I, lo I like the rice den name too. That's dope. I mean, everything's got to be rice related. It's feeling like the top of the mountain. Uh, with my arms open wide. Yeah, in my head to the sky. Um, but yeah, so you wanted to go into nutrition a little bit yeah. and like current events when it came down to the sort of things that are in Americans food today. Yeah. And oh god I yeah mean, something I just came in my head when you said uh, americans food he's got to be so so specific yeah it's good because i know there's a lot of things in other countries that they actually ban compared to america when it comes to their level yeah, of carcinogens and pesticides I've been reading a lot about that, that they put in their food uh, so uh like me personally i like to live by the 80 20 rule so 80 percent of the time i'll actually be eating healthy and then sometimes i'll have that cheat meal which is the 20 percent so Keep your sanity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It allows you to um, stay true to whatever diet that you may be sticking with. What Just it? activate those endorphins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those those extra little uh, serotonin <laughs> molecules that you get, you know, whenever you eat something. Yeah, really big good. words this episode, you know, bring the dictionary out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least for got, me. At least for me. <laughs> carcinogens, um, you know, other religion. Molecular <laughs> religion. That's, oh, that's a new one. But yo, no, seriously, that's a that's a crazy topic with American foods. I've been seeing a lot of those posts, like all this crazy stuff thrown in our foods, and we kind of just let it go. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of us aren't political, so maybe not voting and keeping up with the times and the government. You know what I mean? So yeah. we're kind of like, we're kind of letting it slide on our own. We can't really blame no one. We're letting this. Kinda yeah, go right well, since we we aren't really doing anything about it personally, it's uh, allowing those in power to kind of like continue. Like recently, yeah. they actually um, gave the go ahead for synthetic meat like oh, straight up yeah. lab grown meat that's what meat. i was talking about yep and i so, just read that i was like dang i broke my heart i was like not the chicken <laughs> yeah <laughs> they've been doing lab it for made years. chicken and so it's, it's basically fake it's yeah, artificial yeah it's just like flavors and colors made in and a, the juices and... in the lab so it's very oh, sketchy geez. i don't know if they're gonna you know gmos you know shoot up the meat full of uh, vitamins in case yeah. it's lacking any of that yeah. and then with it not being you know natural or organic it might get broken down in our bodies a little bit differently, which can cause issues that haven't been tested. So like if you don't go to the doctor, you yeah, ain't going to And then the, old, the thing with the doctor is once again, you know, they're here to uh, <laughs> prescribe more and more. So Look, I gonna... love my doctors, man. Don't get, don't get mad. Don't get mad. Don't get mad. Uh, <laughs> hey, no but, insurance. Yeah, I'll be is hearing expensive. on the internet all the time, going to the doctor just, just to find out he's going to tell you A, B, and C. And you're like, oh, I got to do pay this amount for what? And it's like, just to know if you do have it or maybe you don't even have anything at all. Exactly. Know? And then like when you do have something, whatever it may be, they're going to prescribe I mean, go, you go something. Go check your blood pressure at least. Like, do that. 
Yeah, okay, blood work is physical. important. But when it goes to deeper issues. Yeah. So I personally like to follow a holistic style approach when it comes to my health. Like I want to make sure that, you know, these natural remedies, which you can find in nature, can then be put into my body versus some like Prilosect or Zincon. Like, yeah, something yeah crazy. side effects may include dying, right? a heart attack. Like, <laughs> Yo, why are there attack. so many hidden uh, side effects when you can just do something natural like uh oh in fact when it comes to my uh morning routine i actually like to take i brought it brought it here so (laughs) yeah ta-da uh no so this is filled with um one tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil and then yeah (laughs) and then another tablespoon of lime juice and then a sprinkle of cayenne pepper so the cayenne pepper is the like blood stimulant to help circulate the system the extra virgin olive oil helps the lining of your stomach and help repair the liver. That's dope. And, you know, yeah, I got to take care of that liver. Yeah, and because, you know, for some of you who may, you know, be heavy drinkers, maybe a little olive oil. You know, <laughs> right, just might help. it, man. It might like, help. Have some balance. No. Yeah, and then... Uh, it's real talk, though. Real talk, for real. Yeah, and then the lime juice actually helps the, you know, acidity in your stomach. So it's like a primer, if anything that, so. that's actually very important that's so that's good that you that acids no you know it's, go ahead <laughs> <laughs> here we go this is this proof i'm not talking shit i i do, I do this uh, <laughs> i love that i love the little the little bottle you got uh, hilarious yeah. the what does it bottle. taste like spices um, it's just bitter i just want to know <laughs> it's not supposed I mean, to be good <laughs> yeah it, no it's um it's a little. It's got a little bit of a kick to it because of the cayenne pepper. I was about to say that's kind of why I asked. I was, yeah, it got that kick. You see it live right here. <laughs> Spicy, hey. and then the lime juice just adds the little like, obviously it's lime juice. You know, you yeah, like, that's making weird ass faces. Yeah, that's but, funny. Um, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, I like to start the morning off with that, and then I'll actually um, fast. So I'll eat maybe like what oh, time you do is fast. it now? Around twelve to one is when I'll eat. And I like to get to the gym at around 10, 10 30, So that way my body is all spiked up from um, just waking up. Mm, and then as that, I start naturally. to calm down, yeah, yeah, use that early morning energy, get the gym out of the way with, and then come back, eat breakfast, shower, and then get back to work on the computer. Oh, okay. So how do you, how do you build that up to fast in the morning and go work out? Like you don't have anything. No. Just so water. like it's, yeah, it's, this ex- is a mental thing you've built. Yeah. It's oh, difficult God, when it comes that, to it sounds hard. Yeah, when it comes to lifting on an empty stomach because you've got no like reserves for energy and it's just straight up primal. Um, but that's facts, man. Yeah, but when you work out and the longer your fasting period, it allows your body to uh, heal itself from the inside. So I know there was some pretty iffy data when it came to if you fast for like fast period amounts of time, like you will spike your testosterone levels. Now, just because you spike them doesn't mean it's going to stick with you. And it's only very short durations. And it's about, I think it was a 3% spike. I know there was one lady claiming it was 1300%, but that's what that's, <laughs> oh yeah, that's God. straight up giving yourself yeah, a cancer shot in of, water too. Like, yeah, it's like shooting yourself up with like trend type of thing. And trend is a terrible, terrible steroid. Never. I feel like out of everything you just said, people are like, what's trend? Yeah, yeah, that. everyone's going to be like, wait, what? <laughs> trend? Uh, testosterone? No, don't do that. That's some other time. But uh, fasting will increase your testosterone, which is typically what I would like use that little boost for in the gym. And then afterwards, I'm starving. And like, sometimes, no lie. Oh, no, well, I use... yeah, you're going to be starving, which I heard starving. I don't know the whole science behind it, but like it's good for the body to have some type of starvation. Like they say uh, as, a, as a man, like living to get the bread and butter to support your family. They say that that stimulant of being hungry is mm. actually healthy for the human mind because it keeps you on edge. I don't know what I yeah, just said, yeah. but that was crazy. So it's like, like when uh, you're always full, you don't have that like spark. Like, yeah, I need to, you know, go do some, eat some. Yeah. So like and on top of that, um. Well, hanger, check. you know, hanger kicks in a little bit. So whenever you're you're starving and you're at the gym, with, oh, hangry, uh, you know, angry. hungry, and you get a little angry. So that <laughs> that, that, little, shit, yeah. that helps you set PRs. When you be in the gym, you're starving, you get hangry. Somebody's like, "Hey, how many sets you got left?" No, 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 no. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm here right now. Leave me. You alone. don't even say nothing. Just, no, just look at look them. At them like, <laughs> they're like, you. "I'll come back later." Sorry, but yeah, when it comes to how I like to start my mornings, it's usually like prep and that's what the the shot 
and then getting ready for the gym, go to the gym, I'm starving, come back, eat, shower, and then I start working. So that's my my process, my yeah. morning routine, I guess. I don't I don't it. know why. I don't know it's like when I get, it's so funny you talk about that hang, the hungry feeling. Like it's true, like fasting will get you your state of mind like really purified and get you in a strong build that strength. But then like this this end might be a little bit like off topic but like when it comes to like everyday life you're like working out and then you get that little edginess do you actually deal with that like in your character like in your day-to-day basis like do you so, ever feel bad when you kind of like say something to your girlfriend or maybe your mom and it's coming from being hangry like it's so much dis bro it's so much discipline to do it man it is though and that's what the the fun fact about it is is like i like to use that hanger to almost monitor myself for the level of verbiage that I use to people and the tone when I speak to people because if I'm like hungry angry whatever you want to call it I keep that to myself I don't like when you don't verbalize the, that you're hungry no 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 like yeah, I'll take <laughs> I'll take care of it myself if I'm hungry yeah, I'll yeah, go yeah, okay, get some right, food right, right. depending on whatever but it's more like the tone that I take with people if I'm hangry um I don't want the other person having the conversation with me to know that I'm hangry. It's me managing those emotions and like, hey, just to let you know, I'm a little hungry right now. So whatever we're doing, can we either speed it up or can I go grab a, a grab a bite or something? So it's uh, respectfully, respectfully. Yo, you know, it's so funny, I, I need a, a skit where like it's the real life version of that. And it's like, look, <laughs> the internal we're getting dialogue. out of here right now because yeah. I'm hungry. No, the internal dialogue sometimes awesome, would be like, bro, yo, you guys don't know Matt. Like, yes, bro, you, I, I love you for that, bro. Very, very soft spoken, humble. Yes, so I could, I could verify that for you. You definitely probably deal with your hangriness worse, than, uh, much better than I do. Mine's horrible. You don't want to know me when I'm hungry. Anyways, oh my gosh. All right, next thing, man, because the fasting and all that and um, preparation in the morning. I think preparation in the morning is like a cliche you see on the internet or like affirmations. But bro, man, as I get older, I'm like, man, that first hour of the day. That first 30 minutes, uh, that first 15 minutes, not on social media or try not to be because most days I do, you know, but getting up, taking, um, you know, taking this drink and having some nutrition in you. Mm-hmm. If you're going to fast, fast. If you're going to eat breakfast in the morning, maybe it should be light. You know, it's like these different routines in the morning is like so vital. Uh, is this something that like when you build this habit, do you feel like it ever goes away? Like do you have days and weeks where you feel like it's slipping and you got to regain this habit? So, so long as you... Is that a good question? Oh, yeah, that's a great, <laughs> yeah, that's a great uh, question. Uh, when it comes to building habits, though, the more you do them, the more it comes second nature. So unless I've been traveling a lot and then I've broken the habits, they're usually always there. It's just second nature. And, so. and, you're, and t- I mean, I would figure you're traveling, trying to have these things in order to, like, waking up there still in your routine, even though you're probably not... <laughs> He's like, no, he's like, I'm, I'm like, in Miami, bro. Never yo, mind. Yeah, because I I'm say in that, LA. What are you talking about? I was thinking about my trip in Mexico for the week, and I was like, yeah, that was vacation. Yeah, none none yeah, of that. None three of that. In the morning, wake up at like two. But I feel Facts. like when you're setting up a habit, you need a place, a, spe- a specifically designed location in order to trigger your brain to start that habit. So since I'm home, every Ours. time I'm home, yeah, every time I'm home, I set up everything so that way it's like a constant flow. Like, shot get ready for the you know day and then go to the gym come back yeah. it's just when i wake up here when i'm on vacation mm. it's a completely different setting wow. so the habit isn't established uh, i think that's I, I don't know man i love that i think it's so important because it's like you everyone is dealing with that waking up in the same place obviously you know unless you're unfortunate right but and it's like building this <laughs> but let's build in that I know some people, but unless you're building that, like, um, you know, that cat, uh, callus or whatever, like mm-hmm. constantly, you know, doing that same thing every day, the, the revelation of it having to be a location and like nurturing that location, that's powerful. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. I don't think many people realize that like, bro, like where you wake up in your room, like you got to organize that first five, 15 minutes. So it almost like travels you into the next 30 minutes and the next hour of your life and the meeting and yeah, man. Holy moly. Sorry, we could go on a whole rabbit hole with that. Yo, what else you got for me, man? What else you been learning? I know we got fake food in, in America and we love it. And we eat it every day. What else we got? Um, <laughs> we got pesticides in food. You know, those, those are everywhere. Sometimes you have to... That's the stuff that preserves the food? Yes. And uh, prevents uh, insects from eating it. So that way the crops, yeah. you know, stay... Oh, before longer. it even gets yeah. like frozen. So like wash your fruit, 
or veggies, whatever you do, wherever you buy them, um, just because they're still covered in pesticides regardless of how you wash. Usually I use uh, baking soda and water, let it simmer, swirl it around in there. This is like specifically for my fruits. So baking soda. Oh, you ain't playing around. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I'll go get it from the grocery store, all organic, bring it home, put it in a thing of water, baking soda, let it sit for like three to five minutes. And this is just cleaning out all that crap that's, that was sitting on there for who knows how long. Exactly. And I'm where, not trying to eat Where that. do you get that, like, um, I know it sounds crazy, but I feel like it stems for a little bit of paranoia. Like, how do you, yeah, how do you, where did that stem from to, like, you know, we're we're dudes, bro. We're guys. Like, we wake up, barely do our bread, uh, bed, brush one side of our mouth, like, go eat two eggs. I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. But you know what I mean? Like, we, like, I'm just kidding. But, you know, we just, like, not, you know, that nurturing towards, like, what we eat and stuff. Or at least uh, most people I grew up, most of the guys I grew up with, where do you get that, like, uh, motivation? So when it comes to the information that I've, you know, been procuring over the years as to what is causing people to get these issues is, you know, diet. And so I've seen some pretty knowledgeable doctors. There's this one lady that I think of right now, but I can't remember her name, sadly. And she goes over all the like holistic ways of, you know, keeping the body at its peak. And so me being a trainer, I'm like, well, how the hell can I do that? naturally without having to fill my body full of all the stuff because to me when you're adding like all these crazy supplements what happens when you stop your body just gets rid of it and then it can't do the same things as it did before but for me i try to go naturally so that way even if those supplements aren't available to me my body can still make the most of what it has available to naturally it. yeah so staying organic making sure Oh, also, when it comes to meat, I personally don't eat pork. I know there's a whole religion based around not eating pork, but are pork you, is Are you implying like, that it's religious? <laughs> no, 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 just, no, yeah, no. Just no. Okay. For me personally, I just don't <laughs> yeah. eat pork because mm -hmm. pigs eat everything. And when you're eating a animal, you're eating what they ate, in a sense. And if pigs, you feed them table scraps, garbage, they'll eat it. And then if you're eating the pig, you're eating garbage. And nobody wants that. There's no nutritional value in a pig that eats garbage. Who so shows for this? All of you who enjoy your <laughs> this is Matt's show today. <laughs> yeah, so for all of you who enjoy your bacon with your eggs in the morning, like... <laughs> what about turkey bacon? I'm just kidding. Turkey? I don't know. Yeah, it's turkey, so it's, oh, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah, technically. Yeah, the word bacon is just for those who are like, oh, yeah, yes, yeah. thank you, got my bacon in. But turkey bacon is fine. Yeah, it's fine. Oh man, we could get away with that. A little bit of salt on that, and I'm straight. Man, dang, you I love, You just said it, you said it like that, man. You're just eating crap, man. You just they eat crap, so you're eating crap. And it's as simple like one, two, three, like you could connect it. But and here in America, it's saturated. It's saturated. Hit living in Orlando, Florida. There's the fast food like industry. I think I'm swinging like crap just because I had to set up earlier, so I never cooled down. But mm. um, it was like um, it's like they're saying that Orlando is like one of the most like dominant places when it comes to the fast food and i could see that you know you got orlando disney world a lot of people are coming around the world to to go to disney to go to disney mm -hmm. you know so i can imagine like you drive down orlando and florida wherever you go to other states it's the same but you come out here man you're getting the mcdonald's every three two three miles man like you'll get two in the same street and that's not a joke and like mcdonald's is like the the primary like idea of of what it is to have horrible nutrition I mean, they're the, <laughs> like, they're the kings like, of fast food, at least for here. I know on the what West Coast, you guys have like In-N-Out, something oh, like that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, so. McDonald's is big. Yeah, there's big over there too. But In-N-Out, that's um, that's like Checkers over here, kind of. Oof, Checkers is terrible. Yeah, Checkers. Is, is, I love Checkers. Oh. Though. <laughs> I love Checkers. Oof, but I haven't yeah, been in a minute though. That. Thank God. Um, but yeah, Orlando filled with fast food restaurants. What's some, uh, what's some things that not even some myth, like, I don't know, what are some myths you've broken or some like things that you found out, like not broken, but like that you figured weren't true or are, or things that you weren't sure weren't true that are true in the like health world that you imply in your, your life. That seemed, that would be pretty like, oh, wow, you should know this. <laughs> um, I'd say one of the things that I recently had found out was Because I know y'all be going down the rabbit holes. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah was that uh, creatine actually helps your brain function as well. I actually made a little video about it on how apparently your brain uses creatinine, which is a little derivative of creatine. And so creatine also cranium? helps... Cranium. What? Cranium. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> cranium and uh, creatine. There you go. 
<laughs> Sorry. Look that, look that. <laughs> no, but um, creatine is also helps your body to retain water. So for those who do sweat, like an abundance of Me. water, take I some creatine. Uh, make sure you keep drinking that water so that way your body can hold on to it. Mm. And that's why creatine is like the natural man steroid. It not only boosts oh, okay. your muscles, but it boosts your brain too. So good. Creatine is actually king on the level of that's supplements. Um, another thing that I had found out was that caffeine doesn't give you more energy, but it blocks your tired receptors. So you may think you're getting more energy from drinking coffee, but in fact, it's just you putting a cap on the receptors of your body. So you're not, gain- tired. yeah, you're not gaining energy. You're just yeah. blocking it. it. Yeah. And it's so weird, man. I have no idea what the science is on this, but like, I'm one of those guys that could drink coffee and fall asleep with the coffee in my hand. Yeah, and like I don't do that. I'd be like, oh, I'm so cool, bro. You know how many times I wish coffee could just wake me up, you know? Interesting. So it's just, it is very interesting. But again, you know, when you're you're getting your body used to something your whole life since you were little, my family drinks coffee, your body's mm. probably not that, like, it's like, yo, dude, you drink this since you're you five years old. You guys got to take, like, the yeah. crack version of yeah. coffee in order uh, to feel something. What works something. for me would be, like, espresso and then, like, a, a donut. Like, I have one time I do that for the gym. I'm not recommending it, but if you need some crazy pump, like, that worked for me. A donut or some sugary. Mm. I didn't think it would work, but so it worked. It that, only lasts for about an hour, maybe. That's like a glucose spike. It's not like you're the whole day spiked. Yeah, it's like for that little session and you're done. <laughs> yeah, because after you hit that nice high sugar high, mm-hmm. so when your glucose spikes up, yeah. it's only good for a short duration. And that's when you got people who come down from the crash. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people no, who, there is, yeah. who don't have like coffee straight black. They'll add like macchiato syrup and the, that's yeah. where the sugar craze gets up there as well. That's not a real pre-workout coffee. Yeah, you got to go espresso sugar a little bit of sugar that's it and then that donut <laughs> that donut is really what's gonna yeah that donut like jersey that really like, yeah, widens your coffee eyes. every day but um no i was watching some workout dude obviously this dude's jack so he's like yeah have a little bit of sugar in the, in the beginning of your workout you'll be straight for people that don't want to go be all weird and stuff and do you know how people are they mm-hmm. want to take um pre-workout pre-workout gets you crazy yeah i don't even all right take so that. next i think we're gonna wrap up here this is really good we could go all day man um I want to talk about you training MMA, man. You're doing oh, MMA stuff. That's yeah, pretty cool. I just did having fun. Start doing that because yep. you know weight you just training had that is nice. Today. And all. You had a training yeah. session today. I actually just got back from that. Yep. Um, but yeah, I just want to switch it up because you know lifting weights is fine and dandy and all. But like, yeah. if you can't move your body or at least become a lethal weapon with your body, it's like okay, so you're only good for moving heavy shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah, even, that's that's you impressive. Only good. That, yeah, that's impressive. But now. I want to take it's not a, like it's not like you're at a party lifting level. up stuff like, like hey, oh guys. yeah no no but MMA I want to take it so that way I can become like a you know lethal weapon yeah um this guy man I don't, I don't know what he means by that okay no nah, but that's what's up um I was gonna say no that's cool man there's different stuff like people you know like people do different things and like it gets you excited again you know like I'm 30 man I gotta do new things to like get my my brain functioning on something on a high level that's a high level and that's intense what you're doing MMA I was gonna say with MMA um Dang, I lost my train of thought. Little disclosure. Just started. Oh, yeah, so yeah, just on, just started. My, my Nothing side. crazy. Oh, this yeah. is literally today is day seven. Day seven. That's it. So one week. Oh yeah. Some some real important for people. Like people, maybe there's people out there that are just not like weightlifters. Like they just not that's just how they are. They're like, I just don't like lifting weight all the time. I could go for a run. Mm-hmm. I could do some push ups, some sit ups, but I'm not a weightlifting guy. I think what's cool about like MMA is like um like mobility. Like or any sport of like that you're that involves that type of movement. Like that's kind of what you're doing. You're going from lifting these big old weights, getting jacked, mm-hmm. and then now also like your joints yeah. and your fluids and your bloodstream and even your heart. Like you mentioned working so hard, people work out so hard that they mess up their heart. Like that's a real thing. Like so for no, that's that one, crazy to think about. <laughs> for that one, where it comes to, because I recently saw this as well, where it's like Americans are now overexerting themselves. I feel like for those Americans that are overexerting <laughs> themselves, it's for steroid those that abuse. are like, well, steroid <laughs> abuse, and those are who are just obese. Like yeah. if you're obese, and then you're trying to work out like a regular person who's been oh, in the gym, that's taking it past your big. like internal organs level of yeah. you know, adaptation. So if you want to uh, continue. To can you know get in shape, your body will get used to it, but don't do a whole hit workout within your first day of perfect yeah. like of training. Um, even too like people get back into training, they be trying to like some people don't realize that mentally you're in a season of your life that when you go to the gym, your body's gonna like feel a certain way, and you might go into hangry mode like really heavy. You know, like you're waking up like unmotivated, and like people need to uh, realize that too. Like even like you work out how many days a week? 
Should maybe about, five, six, maybe. So weight training about three to four, and then now with MMA two to three. Yeah, so. I wanted to bring it back to like how many times working out and what kind of workouts you do. Like when it comes to mobility, like people you're not realizing, like yeah, get real help, um, get fit, look good, be confident. But in the long run, like. Uh, like seriously when you're older you're not everything's gonna deflate but your knees and your elbows and your hands the joints the joints are forever the muscles come and go but the joints are forever even yeah so talk a little bit about i guess about that like in your experience of like just getting into that mma realm and learning that so when it comes to joint health and all that stuff i i like to you know address it with heavy weight so that way they can get accustomed to it so when i'm not carrying it they'll be healthy and they'll be fine but you have to do it that's that's good you have to do it the correct way um when it comes to the mma thing this is more about muscular endurance and you know in order to do mma or brazilian jiu-jitsu for example you have to be flexible in order to get your body into some of the um positions to then tap out whoever it is that you're sparring with uh lethal weapon yeah exactly lethal weapon right there um one of the things that i like to do or at least tell people if they don't like to go into the gym is to just get moving just move like me and a group of friends on like saturdays or sundays we'll play ultimate frisbee and then if i'm have a train that day i'll use that as cardio and just sprint up and down the field and yeah play dope. catch with the frisbee type of thing so whatever you enjoy that gets you moving stick to that and then maybe a little bit harder if you like going for runs maybe shorten up the run put on a weighted vest that's weight go. training right that's, there there you go that's awesome don't go too heavy though because you know once again joints the knees they will take a little bit of a beating so what do you do for the knees real quick so for my knees uh i had bad knees back in the day oh, so when i was know. playing yeah <laughs> when i was playing volleyball all the time just straight up jumping uh i started to incorporate nordic curls now nordic curls are like the negatives of a bicep curl type of thing but with your hamstrings and so doing nordic curls and then hamstring work helps the front of your knees and what is that again that is that an exercise yeah (laughs) so (laughs) so a nordic curl yeah i like insert picture of nordic curl but it's like if you're doing a bicep curl and this is the The regular yeah so this would be your hamstring and then instead of you curling your hamstring you're letting it go down slowly and that's with your whole body weight going down on the joint of the knee oh. so well how do you do it a band yeah so okay, i like okay, to that's strap, what I think. yeah i like okay. to strap my feet into something or if you have a partner they can hold yep. your feet down and then you kind of just let yourself fall until, and those have been helping yep and so you actually have, i recently really injured my wrist this morning i woke up and like the pain was going away it was the first morning i woke up and there was no pinch but today as the day went on it kind of like Mm. I kind of feel it again. Were you riding with your hand or I do. I, unfortunately, man. Well, I was boxing and hit in the bag and I punched it the wrong way because I'm a dummy, didn't know how to punch it. Mm. And it guy's been three months now. But the pain is going away. It's just that it's lingering. It's like, no, like, is it going to go away or linger? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, dang. It's funny. I'm There's pretty, actually. I'm pretty sure you got that working out maybe like on a shoulder or. Oh, yeah, or so when it comes to um, my wrists, I, I've been learning how to wrap my wrists properly for boxing mm. and like bag work. And yeah. it's funny because you say you hurt your wrist boxing and yeah. they actually call that like a boxer's fracture because uh-huh. they throw hooks and then sometimes uh-huh. the wrist isn't the right way and then uh-huh. boom, fractured. Yeah. So hopefully yours isn't fractured, obviously not. Um, You're moving it, it around. I was going to say, I might have felt like it was almost a minor fracture because like it's three months and the pinch was there, but it never got. Okay, so the pain shot up to here. Mm. And then it was like lingering right here, like so. Right you here. still have it. And then right now the pain, the pain was a big sore here, and I can't bend it all the way down without Oof. it hurting a little bit, like a pinch. So yeah, so, you better build up the forearm muscles. I was gonna say that I was gonna say one thing for sure, guys. It's like when I started, when I wasn't going to the gym and I heard it, I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna lift weights. I'm gonna make it worse, and it got worse. Mm-hmm. Like my wrist wasn't being used, so it got even more stiff and at the first day i went working out started feeling better promise like i, I lift up the dumbbell went home and i was like wow like it, it was just a muscle that got really like stiff mm-hmm. hopefully that's what it is i'm not really good with my wrist i have arthritis a little bit i was gonna say also since you and i started training together um i know chest has gotten a little bit easier for you because yeah, i know you were saying before and then as we started doing some it has uh, I did incline more weeks. and bench and all that stuff uh it's been getting better so yeah. We've been training, guys. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. guy goes hard, bro. You go hard. You go in. Yeah. I'm not going to say I'm not going that. crazy. No, I'm not, <laughs> yo, not crazy. Yo, Matt's the type to be like on set three and like, yo, you straight. He's like, I'm good. I'm like, man, you do that every set, bro. Like, that's crazy. 
<laughs> I mean, the only way to get better, you got to put yourself through it. So. That's what's up, man. I love that. Um, damn, man, I think we're going to wrap it up. Man, this is fun. We could do this again. If you guys, you know, like what you're hearing, please comment. You got, We've been growing, bro. Uh, we started at... I started at 220 subscribers, something like that, last year. Oh, shit. Or maybe maybe 150. Mm. Um, I did do a little cheat code. I posted an Asania reel when he first won the match. I posted a reel, and um, it just went viral. But overall, I'm at 700 now. That's good. That's a 500 increase. That's, that's, that's crazy. That's huge. The new one but, that you um, released. Uh, comatose? Comatose. That's appreciate actually pretty. That. I like that one. Yeah, I like dope, that man. One. I appreciate that. That is, that is a different one out of the four. Comatose is out. I Thank you for that. And like, but you know, um, the pod, what I was saying was like the the music and other videos might not be getting attention, but whenever I drop my, my newest podcast, Relax, Relax and Take Notes, um, it went up to 100 views. Um, you know, some videos, man, they're hitting fifties and I'm like, okay, but these are organic people. I haven't put no Google ads behind it yet. Mm. Um, but you know, people were tuning in a hundred views and I had no Google ads or no promotion. So I know like organically uh, around over 50 some people are clicking into the new, new podcast. So, um, you know, people, thank you guys tune into this, man. So, yo, thank you for the wisdom, Not a problem. experience given on this, on this episode. Um, anything you want to just give us uh, any websites or like any promotions of your, I know you got merch. Whatever oh, you want. Yes. Uh, so when it comes to keeping your body healthy, there's a free consultation uh, if you use Emrys 10, so Emrys 10 for Swish uh, Physical Therapy, or you can message Kevin. Well, we'll put the links too. Can yes. You send me the links, links yep. uh, for phys- mm-hmm. Swish the Physical bottom. Therapy, so you can get your free uh, body diagnostic, which is what I use to find out That's where I, I was that. weak. <laughs> And um, yeah, I'll take you for sure. Um, and then Rice Time Fitness is my Instagram handle, along with the name of my website where I have my clothes. Um, and yeah, hit me up there, yeah. DM train, and we can get it popping. Yes, sir. So again, man, RPL TV with Matt Rice. Want to know a little bit more about Matt? Amazing testimony story. Go check out. I think it's like episode two. It's, you guys scroll all the way down in the podcast section of the playlist. Go find that. Again, thanks for being on the show once again. Oh, no. Thanks for all the training, thanks for wisdom, that invitation. and y'all keep showing love and support. We're gonna give y'all yes. more nutrition facts, more health and fitness uh, motivation ideas, create creative ways to be fit and healthy. Y'all know what it is. RPO TV. We are trying to give you the best that we can do. Love y'all. Like, subscribe, comment, share with a friend. We out. Peace. Oh, mic drop. Not my phone. <laughs>